Prince William, born to be king. He often used to say to his mother that he didn't really want to be king. His childhood was a mixture of enormous luxury and privilege and disaster. Kate Middleton, a middle-class home county's upbringing. Probably received some rather standoffish or condescending views towards her because she wasn't an aristocrat, unlike Diana or even Sarah Ferguson. This is the remarkable story of a prince and a commoner. One day, they will reign over us. How have they juggled traditional royal life and the modern world? It's not all about, you know, palaces and kings and courtiers. There are real people out there. So that mixed together is making William a very successful king in waiting, without a doubt. We'll look back at rarely seen images of their lives. There was him at one stage on his hands and knees cleaning out a loo. Now, you don't see a future king doing that very often. And hear from insiders who've watched their every step for years to reveal how Kate has adapted to her royal role. His girlfriend was being hounded in just the same way as his mother had been. And of course, we all know the outcome of that. She's moved from being waiting. How William has embraced his sense of duty while those around him have rocked the boat. You couldn't be, in William's view, a member of the royal family dipping in and out. You are either in or you are out. And ask, does the perfect image they portray mean the future of the monarchy is too good to be true? The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, they will be watching very carefully, especially given that younger royals in the past have got things very badly wrong and they don't want that to happen again. I think they have been being tested out. I think people have been watching to see whether the crown is safe in their hands while still being a traditional royal, like taking a gap year, the first British heir to do so. I thought this was a, a bit more of a way of um, making, uh, trying to help people out and uh, meet a whole range of other different people from um, different countries. William was allowed the luxury of a gap year. His father, the Prince of Wales, was determined that he needed to be educational. He was not just going to be allowed to go and spend a year playing polo in Argentina. Adapting to royal life remarkably well, for an institution that is hundreds of years old, this was a concern. I'm quite convinced that in the early days, Kate probably received some rather standoffish or condescending views towards her because she wasn't an aristocrat, unlike Diana or even Sarah Ferguson, uh, and that... Once William and Kate had married, it sort of sealed the future, as it were. William will become the king, um, Kate will become the queen consort. So um, it, it gives us a chance to look into the future. And, and when we look, we see something which is young and fairly modern and something that makes people feel optimistic. The queen conferred dukedom on William and the couple became officially known as the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. It was time to step up as working royals. Since their wedding, they've had to get more into focus, you know, because let's not forget... Kate now speaks in this wonderfully uh, RP accent, um, which her parents don't have. Once you've burnt your boats and you've married the future king, you've got to learn these things. It's like, you know, if you go to Italy and you want to live there on your own, you've got to learn to speak Italian. You've, you've got to. And I think it's the same thing. So. Kate's very um, good, as it were, <laughs> learning to speak Italian. While Prince George's birth may have been in keeping with tradition, it was a milestone in modernising the royal family. Before he was born, the law of succession to the throne was updated for the 21st century. It was exciting to see the changes in the laws of succession that determined that if uh, William and Kate welcomed a girl first, that girl would retain her place in, in the line of succession versus being stepped over by a younger born brother. That was all very exciting. Of course, those uh, changes became inconsequential uh, temporarily because a, a boy was born first. But Charlotte maintains her place in the line of succession, even with the birth of a younger born brother. So that's an exciting thing to have come about uh, in light of William and Kate expanding their families. 
We wanted, as I understand it, to be much more hands-on parents, and suddenly they have this massive workload which they weren't anticipating. Tatler say they stand by Anna's reporting. But Kensington Palace also denied the claim that Kate disliked Meghan's wedding plan for her bridal party not to wear stockings, as it would be a breach of protocol and the Cambridges honour royal conventions. We've really seen them take on a very traditional royal role. William and Kate have really embraced that. Megxit wasn't the only crisis that's engulfed the royal family that William and Kate have had to deal with. In November 2019, Prince Andrew was forced to retire from public life. Senior royals, including Prince William, were said to be horrified by the comments he made in a TV interview, trying to defend his friendship with a convicted paedophile, Jeffrey Epstein. But you were staying at the house of yes. a convicted sex offender. It was a convenient place to stay. Pretty much everyone told Andrew it was a great mistake to give an interview to explain a relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. You can't control it. And Andrew, he's no genius. So he said some very silly things in the interview and they would have horrified William. And we understand that it was William who was very much of the view that Prince Andrew could not continue to have a public role I think that was very significant, not only that we were being um, leaked that information, but that William was involved at the very highest level. It's really the first time we've seen that. Removing Prince Andrew and the Sussexes from royal life will make life complicated for the Windsors. Depending on the Queen's ability to continue working in her mid-90s, the plan could leave a public-facing monarchy of just four. The Duke and Duchess of Cornwall and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. How do four people oversee the Commonwealth? How do four people do all the ceremonial occasions, all the official engagements, oversee all the charities that they do? William has a great sense that he has inherited something which is important and he needs to step up to the mark, even if it becomes his whole life. Megxit and Prince Andrew's departure have shown how Prince William places duty over close family relationships. But the coronavirus pandemic of 2020 would pitch the Cambridges into their greatest challenge yet. Something as terrible as this awful pandemic has actually given William and Kate a chance to shine in a very modern way. With the departure of Prince Andrew and the Sussexes behind them, William and Kate and the other Windsors must have been hoping to resume their royal duties, albeit with a busier diary than usual. But it wasn't to be. A big jump in coronavirus cases and the first death here in Britain. The pressure ramps up. While politicians and scientists look for strategies to protect the public and the death toll rose into the thousands, the British public look to the royal family. The Windsors, and especially William and Kate, now found a new duty of care and consolation. The Queen has been out, outstanding and has given a series of, of public broadcasts which have done an awful lot to reassure the population, I think, but beyond the Queen, it has been very much William and Kate who've, who've come to the fore. The Queen is effectively in confinement at Windsor Castle. Charles tested positive for the virus. So William and Kate are really uh, picking up the slack. Three days before lockdown started, the couple took part in the first royal engagement in connection with the pandemic, when they visited a South London NHS helpline. How many calls are you getting with them? public around mental health and, and... Listening to the concerns of NHS staff and thanking them for their dedication, William and Kate showed great sympathy. Something as terrible, as negative as, as this awful pandemic has actually given William and Kate a chance to shine in a very modern way. <laughs> They've revealed things about themselves that will always be remembered that during the pandemic they were there. When the nation went into lockdown on the 23rd of March, the Cambridges proved to be the most successful of the royals to embrace new technology and stay working within social distancing guidelines. 
continuing traditional royal duties, but in a clever, modern way. Staying connected, staying um, positive and being able to talk to friends and family is, is so crucial. So suddenly the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are at the front of the royal family, are the most visible royals, and have been doing all sorts of things virtually, whether it's opening hospitals or visiting schools or helping to found a couple of new charities. You know, what we're seeing now is, is the NHS and the frontline workers doing the most extraordinary job and that's really come to the forefront in the last um, a few few weeks and I think it's going to dramatically change how we all value and see our frontline workers. William and Kate have isolated themselves with their children in Norfolk where they have joined in the weekly applause for NHS carers. And in a callback to William's former career as an air ambulance pilot, they've offered their London home as a refuelling post for emergency flights. William was given permission for helicopters to land in the grounds of Kensington Palace, which is remarkable. That would never have happened in the past. The royals who lived there, even during the war, were a bit sniffy about people growing cabbages nearby. They haven't patronised us, uh, but they're one of us. They absolutely have managed to blend their sense of duty with a real tangible humanity. And personally, I've never admired them more than I do for how they've coped during the pandemic. Throughout his life, Prince William has made choices that have stepped away from the royal standard. I don't like being treated any different at all. I don't like special treatment at all. He took a gap year volunteering for charity and chose a wife from a non-aristocratic background. Should we expect the Cambridges to break even further with tradition when they reach the throne? I think if anyone was one. I think that they will have a, a warmer uh, feeling, a warmer approach to the British public. Very happy birthday on Thank Valentine's you. Day. Yes, Valentine's Day. Awesome. From everything we've seen to date with William and Kate, I think that they're going to demonstrate a monarchy that is caring and compassionate, that proceeds with dignity, but also with a bit of humour. <laughs> And I do think that they show the sort of approachability and relatability that will safely sustain the monarchy into the late 21st century. Kate adapting to royal life remarkably well. For an institution that is hundreds of years old, this was a concern. I'm quite convinced that in the early days, Kate probably received some rather standoffish or condescending views towards her because she wasn't an aristocrat, unlike Diana or even Sarah Ferguson, uh, and that would have been frowned upon. Kate may not have an aristocratic background, but during the run-up to the wedding, she carefully cultivated a regal image.